Good morning and welcome to worship. It's Sunday, June 28th. And we are here again in the sanctuary at First United Methodist Church in Newport. And I'm in the balcony one more time. I had a lot of response from this past week where folks said that they really enjoyed uh, this perspective. And the opportunity to share with you, as always, is a gift and a joy. I bring you some good news. Uh, we have a new member this week. Uh, Mrs. Judy Clark has transferred her membership from First United Methodist Church in St. Augustine, Florida, Florida, to First United Methodist Church here in Newport. And we're thrilled to have her as a new member and part of our fellowship here at First United Methodist. Welcome, Judy. Uh, you're truly a joy uh, to be with and a great addition to our fellowship. The hard news uh, before us is that things don't look like they're improving. Uh, my contact with uh, emergency management here in Cock County and with other pastor friends uh, say that we have uh, several new ongoing cases of COVID-19 and uh, we're continuing to be very careful and slow to reopen so that we do not add to contact uh, with those who have been infected and so that we do not have any further community spread. You should have received uh, a survey this week, either via email or in the communicator. If you've not yet received your communicator, either via email or in the mail, um, just let us know. Uh, there was an, another, adi an additional email that was sent out with just the survey. Uh, several people have responded, but the response has not been overwhelming yet. So I invite you to uh, look for that in your inbox, maybe in your junk mail, or wait for the paper copy to come in the U.S. mail in the communicator. I invite you to uh, fill those out, get them back to us as soon as you can, so that we can see where you are in your feelings about uh, reopening, but most especially so that we know um, the time that folks might be willing to come to worship if we do choose to open in person sometime soon. Today, we start a new sermon series. It's all about prayer. I'm issuing a call to prayer, an invitation to prayer over the next month to make prayer a part of your life, your daily life with all that you have and all that you are. And as we come to worship this morning, come knowing that I pray for you. I covet your prayers and I hope that you pray constantly. Take this time as we begin our time of worship to enter into a time of prayer and know that God is with us. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to come to worship. And as we pray on this a day of worship, we seek your presence among us. We seek your presence in us. That we might find our home 
in you. Lord, forgive us when we look to all kinds of other places to find joy, to find contentment, to find peace. We know there are all kinds of gimmicks and all kinds of books and all kinds of apps that help us seek to find breath and peace and contentment and joy. But Lord, we know that our joy is in you and you are our home. Speak to us anew this day and fill us, we pray with your Holy Spirit, that we might come home to you anew. That we might live in you and you in us and we might find your joy. Help us to listen. To hear your still small voice in the midst of the wilderness that is life today. And as we hear you, Lord, help us follow. And as we follow, help us become like you. Fill us, we pray. In the name of Christ, amen. Our scripture lessons this morning begin with Psalm 34, verses 4 through 8. Hear the word of God. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. And from Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. O God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there, where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips when I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. O oh God, make me, your servant David, disappear, so that your word might be revealed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, why pray? Well, the reasons really are simple. We pray because our heart seeks its true home, and its true home is the very heart of God. God longs for our presence. After Adam and Eve made their fateful decision to turn away from God, God came to the garden, calling for Adam, seeking Adam. In much the same way, God invites each of us to come to Him, to come home to return to the way of life for which, for which God made us. Our hearts hear God's call. But we've tuned God out. It's kind of like our phones are ringing somewhere in the house, and we can hear them, but we don't know where they are. 
much less who's on the other end of the line. So we go in search of our phone and we look and we look and we look. But we're never looking in quite the right place until it seems like it's too late. There was an article in the New York Times on September 7th, 2003. I know it was a long time ago, but bear with me. Uh, the article was entitled, The Futile Pursuit of Happiness. And the researchers in the article talked about how we think we know what we want, but in fact, we don't. We think we know that which will make us happy, when really and truly nothing <laughs> is making us happy. I know that article because a friend emailed it to me way back then, and I've saved it ever since. It was one of the 10 most emailed articles from the New York Times in 2003. Yeah, it was a long time ago. And yeah, the world has changed. But do you think we're any more happy now than we were then? Because you see, this article speaks to the human condition. It speaks... It speaks to us because we're drawn to that which makes us happy. That which we think gives us peace and joy and contentment. You see, we spend so much of our life looking for one place after another. For something that will give us what we think we need, what we want. Joy, contentment, and peace. But... In truth, our restless hearts will only be happy. Our restless hearts will only find their rest in God. This image is an image of St. Francis of Assisi. Francis was well known for being a man of peace and contentment, a man who, who spent his time in his garden with the animals, communing. And it seems, perhaps mythologically, seems that the animals could speak to him. But Francis knew the words of the psalmist. The words that we've read already today from thousands of years ago, expressing our heart's desire, seeking after God. O God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My soul clings to you. Happy are those who make their refuge in him. In the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. You see, the heart of the psalmist's prayer, indeed all prayer, is this loving relationship between God and me. Between God and you. Between God and all those who seek their heart's true home. I've alluded to some lines that Richard Foster has uh, in a book called Prayer, The Heart's True Desire. Finding the Heart's True Home. I believe that's the subtitle. Prayer, Finding the Heart's True Home. And it's Foster who uses this image of, of the heart's true desire is to find its home in the heart of God. And so he describes this coming home in a very interesting way. Listen, we do not need to be shy. He says, God invites us into the living room of his heart where we can put on old slippers and share freely. He invites us into the kitchen of his friendship where chatter and batter mix in good fun. He invites us into the study of his wisdom where we can learn and grow and stretch and ask all the questions we want. 
He invites us into the workshop of his creativity. He invites us into the bedroom of his rest where we are known and are known to the fullest. The key to this home, this heart of God is prayer. In the background study for this week, I give you St. Francis's prayer of peace. I started to pray it for you, but uh, I really want you to go to the church's website to download the background study and to read this prayer. In addition, I'm challenging you to use the background study every day this week and read through a different psalm each day. The psalm is the Bible's prayer book. So I've given you five psalms, actually six psalms, for you to pray this week along with the prayer of St. Francis. This prayer remembering that Francis spent this time contemplating God's presence in his life. And and I know that sounds oh so ethereal and oh so maybe strange. But it's also something I've heard from many of you that you miss coming to this room because you miss the peace and the comfort that it is that allows you to, to be contemplative to pray earnestly. And on one hand, that thrills me, and I'm excited to know that you consider worship in this space so important. But it also troubles me. Because if we cannot find the contentment of God's heart outside of this room, are we truly who we say we are? I know worship for us is always a place of peace and always a place we go for comfort and aid and rejuvenation, perhaps. But it's time we stop seeing worship and the opportunity for corporate prayer to be the, the, the gas station, the filling station, we used to say, along the way so that I can face the week ahead. And that's one of the images that, that I've always heard about going to church on Sundays, like going to the filling station and tanking up so I can make it through the week. And the joke being, some Saturdays I feel like I'm running on fumes. I get it. What happens when you're running on fumes on Monday? Where do you go? So I've given you a tool. Go to the church website. If you don't know it, it's fumcnewport.org. And in the top menu bar, there's the word news, N-E-W-S. Click there. And the first article is this week's background study, an invitation to prayer. If you can print it, do so. If you can't, Just make sure you have your computer or your tablet or your phone or whatever you get the internet on close by. And then get your Bible. Open it to the Psalms. (laughs) Connie Boyer, when I was in the first grade, taught me how to find Psalms in the Bible. She said, hold your Bible straight up and down with the spine on the desk and open it directly in the middle. And if you're not in the Psalms, you did it wrong. (laughs) Psalms is right smack dab in the middle of the Bible. I think it's there because we need to be able to find it easily. Because when we get lost, we need to be able to find a way to pray. Prayers don't have to be flowery. Prayers don't have to be with these and thous. Prayers are merely that opportunity to be invited into the house of God. to commune with God, to listen to God. I have a friend from church several years ago 
She began all of her prayers, whether they were her personal private prayers or her public prayers as the lay leader of the congregation. Hey, God, it's me again. That familiar, familiar, simple faith is what will see us through. Hey, God, it's me again. The good news, <laughs> the amazing, most beautiful thing I can tell you, God is always ready to listen. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And amen.
much in every life I worship you Oh, I worship you You are here Meeting every need I worship you I worship you God is a way maker. He makes a way for us when we think there is no way. He finds us where we are and we can always come to him. You don't have to be in this room. There's no magic place. Seek God wherever you are. Reach out to God and let God know you need them. The good news. He's here. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. Go in peace. And may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen.